Well, today we continue to celebrate a feat that brings joy to many hearts. A heartwarming story, even if you may not necessarily be a beneficiary. In the following report, Joe News' Maxwell Agbaba tells the story of how childbirth for those who have been trying without success may just be easier. The first fetus to be formed from a Belgian in vitro fertilization technology has been delivered here in Accra and it may just be the beginning of a breakthrough for what childless couples seeking children have long been waiting for. Take a look. The patient monitor inside theater two of the Pentecost Hospital is beeping an indication all is set for the grand delivery of the first baby using the Belgian IVF technology. About seven medical personnel from the Pentecost Hospital have gathered around a bed. On the bed, a 35-year-old woman we choose to call Mami Akosia lies in a supine position. Mami Akosia, who has tubal blockages, has been trying to conceive for the past eight years. But now, that movement that only played out in a mind's eye is happening. Outside the theater, some anxious nurses of the hospital are watching the caesarean section through a glass window. They cannot be blamed. It is the first time the hospital is trying this minimal cost of IVF. Outside the theater, I've met Nanaya Wasei at the fertility center. Nanayo is the CEO of the Association of Childless Couples of Ghana. Nanayo's organization, which was formed in 2012, seeks to support married people who are childless. He has been telling me how he came into contact with the Belgian IVF technology that is helping couples at a lesser cost. I decided to research into that. Um, that led me to come across some Belgians who had developed a new method for doing the in vitro fertilization that brings down the price. It, now, the key difference between the conventional method, which is being done by all the fertility centers in Ghana, apart from the Pentecost Hospital, you know, has to do with the cost involved. But this method was developed using simplified equipment. Couples will pay not less than 18,000 Ghanaian cities for the treatment. But with our method, um, we currently charge 6,000 CDs for the treatment. Now, there is um, one aspect also that has to do with the, what is known as the stimulation protocol. We, on our part, use what is known as mild stimulation protocol arrangement, where we do not give a lot of injections, we do not give a lot of drugs. The advantage with this also is that it prevents women from getting what is known as um, OHSS, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, where sometimes you could have um, the ovaries of the woman getting swollen. I'm back in the theater as the medical personnel led by Dr. Gordon Atto continue to ensure a successful delivery. <laughs> The much awaited cry of a baby is here and is a boy. The doctor who led the team, Dr. Gordon Ni Amaato, retweets the science behind the IVF technology was not changed. The only distinguishing factors are the cost, which is a major deterrent, and the complicated process, which was eliminated. Dr. Atto believes with the introduction of this process, married people, irrespective of their socioeconomic status, will be able to afford in vitro fertilization. Mm. Basically, the science is the same, mm. but then we are being more efficient in terms of uh, cutting costs. Mm. So we avoid wastage, mm. we do minimal stimulation mm. so that we don't use so much drugs. My desire is that IVF will become a part of the normal clinical setting in Ghana. In some jurisdictions, it's even sponsored by health insurance. Mm. But the things are so expensive. Everything is gotten from outside. Mm. And that makes it a bit more expensive for majority of couples to mm. afford.
It's a saying that when you were born, you were born crying and everybody around you was laughing. But live your life such that when you die, everybody will be crying whilst you would be laughing. This baby boy just gave true meaning to that. He's been Expect always expect a dramatic presentation from Maxwell Agbaba. In the studio with me, by the way, is Nanaya Osei, who is the CEO of the Association of Childless Couples of Ghana and also a fertility counsellor. You're welcome. Thank you, Gifty. Congratulations. Thank you. So, first of all, I'm interested to know how many heartbreaking stories that this technology will perhaps mend or change. Um, thank you very much. Um, from this matter, we're going to solve about 80% of um, infertility situations. Um, you know that we have three uh, key methods for handling issues of infertility. The first one is the intrauterine examination, IUI. Um, the next available one is the in vitro fertilization, which is the IVF, um, oh, which right. we developed this one to solve. Um, the last aspect has to do with the ICSI intra cytoplasmic sperm injection. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we haven't developed um, that aspect of um, enabling us to um, handle issues relating to ICSI, but yes. that is just about 20% of the cases. So we believe that this method should be able to solve mm. about 80% of infertility cases. We are in the process of developing you know, other equipment that will enable us to do you know, the equivalent form of the ICSI. I mean, ICSI mm -hmm. has to do with the situation where a man has extreme low sperm parameters. I mean, that's where the count is extremely low mm. uh, in the sense that, I mean, a man could just have about one sperm. Um, that obviously could still be used. So that's for a the new treatment. technology that you're working on. Exactly so, exactly. so what will it do? It will boost the sperm, the sperm count uh, of, the, of the men, as we call it? Well, sometimes you could use all drugs, and you see, male infertility is the most difficult to treat. Um, you could decide to boost the sperm with drugs, other means, but then um, some men may not respond, and you may have okay. to go through the technology. You so, know, what then the does time. the technology do? It will take the sperm and the then sperm. If the man, yes, if uh, the man has egg, one sperm, it will take it and then fertilize the woman's egg with it. Okay. But unfortunately, the TWE method cannot do that. We do the IVF. In this case, a man should have um, the sperm parameters starting with a count, mm. not less than 2 million sperm count, okay. holding motility and morphology constant. Our motility is okay, the ability those are of the sperm. Right. Yeah, speak English. Speak, <laughs> speak English so that All right, motility is the ability of the sperm to move. Okay. And the morphology is the um, shape of the sperm. Okay. You could have, you know, a number of sperm. I mean, unfortunately, traditionally, we have relied on a sperm count as a way of determining a man's fertility, okay. but that's totally not correct. I okay, mean, because there are other, others, as, other as you're saying, that you could well. introduce that could help. Exactly. Uh, you know. Now, let's look at the cost. You said it's 6000 Currently, yes. And to be honest, we could still come down further. Okay, but so why are we not? The majority of the um, cost builders is made up of custom duty, you know, and other charges that we do not have control over. In okay. fact, it is the, we, it, who are we? I'm talking about the, of course, the Association of Childless Couples of Ghana okay. introduced us okay. with the support of the Pentecost Hospital and our Belgian partners. Okay, so that's the so we. So, exactly. All right. So, um, you realize that our main aim is to have a fertility center in the near future where couples without money or with limited money could go and have the treatment done for free or for a little amount to be paid. So we are getting there. Okay. But you see, we How do not soon? want to be too optimistic. That is why we are purging so at this amount. But there are, exactly, there are ways by which we could still come down further. You know, um, like why I said. Why Pentecost Hospital? Well, when I started this NGO in 2012, I had approached a number. In fact, I started, you know, talking to the conventional IVF centers. And I had gone to a lot of the conventional IVF centers. Look, a doctor told me, Prilly, Nana, this method doesn't work. So don't even bother yourself about it. But okay. I was determined to carry on through with it because okay. I knew it worked. And today we have We're proved that it success. works. Was right. this woman a, was, was, was she a volunteer? Did she, the, the couple? They no, you see, we had the first national convention, um, the first national conference for people living with infertility in the year 2013, and we had almost 2,000 childless 
couples and individuals attending that conference. And it was at that conference that we introduced this method. Mm. So we sent messages to them in 2015 that we were about to, you know, um, start it. And fortunately, they came on board and then we had to do some series of examinations, mm. which, you know, led us to select. In fact, has her situation was on about the, the third, the fourth cycle because we had earlier on done three cycles that we didn't achieve pregnancy. I mean, oh, wow. the so first this cycle, was the fourth this one was the fourth cycle. I mean, we do not use trial because yeah, we well, do not well, try with the, human beings. If we are, if we are, if, well, we're seeking, if we're seeking least for us to understand, <laughs> right. then you, she tried for the fourth time. Yes, the first cycle, BBC came to Ghana, they reported it on their, you know, site. And it was yes, not successful. Yes, we, it wasn't. But, I mean, if you're saying it wasn't successful, we, we have to explain that. We had very good fertilization rate that is comparable to the conventional method. IVF starts, I mean, started in a lab. So once we had very good fertilization rate that was comparable to the conventional method, you cannot say that it wasn't successful. Oh, okay. The only difference was that we didn't achieve a pregnancy at that time. Okay. And we achieved if you put it, you it know, in plain on. terms, you say mm. it wasn't successful. But we thank God yeah. that at this point you've been successful, even with the, with the fourth uh, try. But yeah. this is association of um, childless couples. Uh, so will, will this not lead to the extension of the members of your group? Because everybody then begins to no, have children. No, the and association is just a name. Is we do not name? have a grouping of people who pay dues and all that saying that they, are, they belong to the association. It's mm. that. But Those but who have come to do this treatment, mm. I can tell you the kind of a background they have, financial background, it ranges from lowest to the highest. The no, qualification no, no, wise, so I'm thinking see, that what if I'm saying everybody is that the name was chosen for a purpose, and the key purpose is to help deal with a situation of stigma associated with infertility. Why can't the name be mentioned? We can mention other things, but not infertility. So you don't that. like we you have don't a have Ghana blind union, for instance. So you we don't have, have people. You don't have. No, we do not have a group of, of it people. Is not a, I mean, we could have chosen. My okay. name is Nanaya Ose. We could have chosen or says Foundation. This name was discussed seriously with psychologists and other prominent people in the country, and we realize that a key thing associated with infertility, see, we have, I am a fertility counselor, and in, in my counseling, people have become pregnant and giving birth through that. So this puts a lot of stress on people. So we want to lighten the burden, we want to lighten this word of saying that somebody is childless. In any case, what does it mean to say somebody is childless? It simply means that you do not have a child, but that does not make you an infertile person. Okay, so my question, yeah. which I was trying to put across, was whether or not this whole, um, will, will it lose in, will it lose in the, the strength, so to speak, of the name or the, of the association? Because then yeah. it's a good thing yeah. that people begin to, couples who want to have children will begin to help children. Does it, will it affect the association? Will the association be extinct? Never. It won't. I mean, yes, it will only lose it when people come to the realization that if they do not have children, then they are not less human beings than those okay. who have. Do you have children? Yes, I do. Okay. So um, why did you form this organization? Well, that that's a good question. And um, after, when I formed it, I didn't have a child. I mean, okay. obviously, I didn't form it because I didn't have a child then. Okay. You know, had married for about nine years. That was in 2012. Um, but that gave me the passion to carry on with this. And in 2016, we had our first child. Okay. You know, so you see that once we know that something is good, I want to introduce to others. This is what can be used by a number of people. Unfortunately, people use IVF as the last resort. I mean, you can imagine that this lady is just 35 years old. Mm. Now, why was the treatment used on her? Because she had tubal blockages. Okay. You see that a woman could have tubal blockages, and IVF may not wow. be the last resort for you. It could be the first resort. Okay. Because the key uh, treatment for solving tubal blockages now is IVF. I mean, gone were the days where people, women could blow their tubes and all that. But okay. these days, in vitro fertilization has been found to be the best method when okay. it comes to, you know, dealing with issues relating to the tubes. Well, final tubes. word, if you were to speak to, uh, say, the nation, if you were to speak to authorities as to what we can do with this kind of technology, will be what? Well, Very we, briefly. We have started some negotiation with the Ghana Health Service, the Ministry of Health, long ago. Okay. I mean, we wanted to ensure 
that first of all we come out with some laws and policies to regulate the industry because okay. we realize a lot some of the fertility centers are playing with right. people seeking for children we are encouraging the government the government to come along with us to ensure that we complete the process and come out with the laws we also encourage people looking for children to take advantage of this technology because it has come to stay it has come to stay that uh, so be it hopefully uh, people who have been looking for children because not every couple wants to have babies anyway so if you are one of those who are seeking wanting so badly to have children here is a breakthrough for you thank you very much uh, Mr. Osei for coming Thank through. you.